This is Metronome from the Attic. I'm Alex Rabb. Tonight, Ellen's Siberian Tiger. That was wonderful. Thanks. Can you go around and introduce yourselves to us, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Ellen. Do you want to? I'm Carter. Colin. <laughs> nice to meet all of you. Yeah. 
<laughs> so Ellen Siberian Tiger has been around for about a decade now. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit how that's progressed? Sure. I mean, it's been very different. Um, I started it when I was just writing songs by myself. And then um, I had like a bigger, folkier arrangement of like eight friends in high school, like 10 years ago, which Carter was there, which we actually haven't really hung out and played drums with him maybe since then. So that's cool. Yeah. Hey, welcome hey. back. <laughs> uh, and then I did some duo stuff, just like me and a drummer. And then we got a big band where Colin joined about five years ago. And um, now we're back to a three piece. Awesome. How did you go from a singer, songwriter, folky route mm -hmm. to where you are now? It was kind of hard. I feel like, I don't know if it was tough to be taken seriously or tough to take myself seriously, probably both. Um, I just was very self-conscious about playing the electric guitar when I was younger and wasn't invited into a lot of spaces that were, um, that were that kind of music was being played. The way that I was playing music was the way that it felt available to me, um, which was like maybe gentler or more like my friends coming together and like playing music in like a no pressure kind of way. And then uh, I didn't, well, I just started trying to learn how to play the electric guitar kind of when I was like leaving high school felt safer maybe when I was away from people that had known me a certain way, if that makes sense. So uh, with that progression over time with the project, why did you keep with the name Ellen Siberian Tiger? Um, well, the writing process has been the same the whole time, namely like I'm, I'm writing all the songs. Um, and I guess for me, it always feels very personal, like whatever I'm working on mentally is like what I'm writing about. So uh, to rename the project, like, I guess it's never felt appropriate to reinvent myself because like, I'm, I don't know, I'm just me. I, I don't know, does that make sense? It it's does, like an yeah. extension of me. So it's all just under the same, same name. Yeah. So with people coming in and out of your uh, life musically, how has that affected your band? Before, when I was just starting, we had like a lot of people coming in where I wasn't really telling anybody what to play. So it was more like, this is the song, and then everybody can decide what they want to play on it. And um, it was a very like collaborative process. And then that has been the case every time we had a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it's more stripped down, I feel like I have more of the ability to really say exactly what I want to happen, which partially is because we have less people, but it's partially because I've been playing music longer, so I think I have more ideas about what I actually actually want. So we're coming up uh, on a new album, mm -hmm. and we're wrapping up or, or we're going into it. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that progression of how you created this album in comparison to the previous album's release? Sure. Um, the last album that we released as like a full length was my first ever full length album. So um, I kind of had been working on those songs like forever. Um, and putting that together, it felt like we had them all, the band came together, we had everything set and it was time to record an album and I had to pick from all the songs I had written up until that point and pick the ones that were gonna go. For this process, we kind of like set a deadline for ourselves and like picked a date that it was gonna be recorded and gonna be released when we had maybe like 60% of it done, which was very different. So I kind of put a deadline on myself and we actually just finished the music for this album like on Wednesday and it's a Friday today and we're recording it on Sunday. So it's, it's been a lot more of like a crunch time feel, which actually has been cool to have that motivation, but that's a huge difference awesome. <laughs> from last time. Well, can we hear a little bit more from you? Yeah. I'm afraid it's happening again Oh no, down to the peach pit Juice on my chin Felt the fruit between my teeth Trust in my bite Picked it clean Buried the pit Planted the seed It's over now Not how Do I? 
water the garden where I grow things to give to men who hurt. Though I relish what I keep, still I fear that I've been weak. If I saw the warning signs, where should I have drawn the line? Nice. That was great. <laughs> so you have all lived in Philly for a while. Me and Colin have lived in Philly. Okay. Yes. So why Philadelphia? Uh, I like Philly because, um, well, one, I like all the music and art stuff that happens there. It feels welcoming and not quite as competitive, maybe. And um, it's also closer to here, Penn State. I grew up here, actually, so which is nice. And I lived in Boston before that, so it's definitely nicer to be a little closer, and I like Pennsylvania. That's good. Awesome. There's so many musical cities in this country. Do mm -hmm. you feel that Philadelphia is starting to become a place where bands can move to to make it to the next level? The big reason that we wanted to like set up base there was we were a little nervous about the moving to like New York and being part of that competitive scene but we wanted to be close to it and we wanted to be, have some proximity to New York and other cities. So Philly is like kind of a really central location on the Northeast. So with us, I mean, we used to do like 10 day tours where we would like, you know, crash on people's couches. So if you were like, if we were in Philly, it was really easy to like make a two hour drive to Baltimore and back on a weekend or like, or drive to New York and do a gig there and come back to Philly or string them all together. Yeah. Awesome. So with Philly having a huge music scene in it and some bands actually getting national attention, what's it like for a band, what does it take for a band to stand out in a scene like Philly? Jeez. I think, well, I think there's a lot of people playing really good music. It kind of depends on your goals. Like, I don't know that, because, I guess the way that I think of it, there's like the DIY community of people playing more stripped down shows and stuff like that. And then there's like people moving up in like venues or whatever. And that kind of just depends on like, I think what you envision for your, for your project. So I think for us, or at least for me, how I envision it is like bigger and like getting to like bigger spaces or bigger stages and that kind of thing. Um, and that's how I hear the music and stuff like that. Uh, so I think part of it is just intent. And I know there's a lot of people that feel like their music like works best in a certain type of space that it can live in as is. So I don't know, partially that. <laughs> What's your end goal? What does, what does uh, Ellen Siberian want to accomplish? Maybe I don't have a clear idea of my end goal so much as I, I, I feel like the way ahead becomes obvious as I take the steps, you know? Yeah. Um, so like, I didn't really know where I wanted to move. And then it was like, oh, Philly makes sense. And then we're here and it was kind of, I didn't really know, but then I went and visited a bunch of venues. And it's like, oh, there's a stage I wanna play on. And then it's kind of more like, well, how do I make that happen? Mm -hmm. So then when we play on that stage, it's like, okay, well, here's a band that I would wanna tour with, or they're playing a show with this many people. I wanna play a show with this many people. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. very step by step. Ideally, I, I don't wanna do anything else. This is my favorite project, my favorite thing to do. I've been working on it for a bit now, so I'd like to keep, keep doing it for my whole life. Well, can we hear another one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Ever wet pain 
Siberian Tiger, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, thanks for having us. I'm Alex Rabb. This is Metronome from the Attic.